seeing a new surge of migrants arriving ahead of the new year. Last night, another bus arrived at Port Authority. All options are on the table, and yes, one of those options includes a new shelter here on Staten Island. Instead of leaving it for cities and localities, to handle. We start tonight with New York City at a potential breaking point. We have been following the story, as you know, for months. If they were running the city right now, we'd be in, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble. NYC implements new measures. Mayor Adams of the Big Apple is doing a bit of a dance with Texas Governor Abbott over a hot potato called migrant transfers. Picture this. Texas is trying to send in a wave of migrants, and NYC is like, Hold on, cowboy, we're not Texas-sized ready for this. So what's Mayor Adams' game plan? He's not just twiddling his thumbs, he's pulling out the big guns. Imagine an executive order dropping like an explosive, demanding those migrant-packed buses give a whopping 32-hour notice before rolling into town. It's like the city's setting up a VIP section for these buses, and they better RSVP in advance. But wait, there's more. Adams is like... All right, buses, listen up. We're not running a 24-7 welcome party here. He slapped a specific four-hour arrival window on these bad boys, and it's not just any window. It's between 8.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. on five days a week. It's like the city's telling these buses, you've got a schedule, and we're not open all hours of the day. We've got brunch plans, you know. Seeing a new surge of migrants arriving ahead of the new year. Last night, another bus arrived at Port Authority. The city is caring for nearly 60,000 migrants right now. Let's face it, that number is not expected to get smaller. A new year really was exciting to be in Times Square. There was so much energy. And shared our concerns. Uh, both the uh, governor was also uh, communicated with them. If they were running the city right now, we'd be in, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble. You can almost see it now. The buses rolling in, lining up like they're waiting for the hottest club in town to open. Sorry, folks, the party's over afternoon. We've got other things to do, says NYC. So why all this drama? Well, it's a clash of titans, with Texas wanting to offload migrants and NYC trying to keep it cool. Mayor Adams is laying down the law, giving those buses a choreographed routine to follow. It's a real-life dance-off. But instead of dance moves, it's about who can navigate the bureaucratic shuffle better. And you thought city politics was just about shaking hands and kissing babies. Welcome to the big leagues, where executive orders and time windows take center stage. Challenges and concerns. Hold on to your hats, New Yorkers, because the city is facing a crisis that's making the traffic jams and crowded subways seem like a walk in Central Park. 14 buses roll into the city in a single night, and it's not a parade celebrating pizza or bagels. It's a full-blown challenge, smacking NYC in the face. Now, I know we're used to the hustle and bustle of the city that never sleeps, but these 14 buses aren't bringing tourists looking for Broadway shows. Nope, they're packed with asylum seekers, and suddenly it's like the city's playing a game of musical chairs with shelter spaces. We've got emergency shelters bursting at the seams, and it's not because of a wild New Year's Eve party. In fact, over 150,000 asylum seekers have waltzed through the city since this crisis kicked off. That's like fitting Yankee Stadium with hopeful faces seeking refuge. Emergency shelters are feeling the squeeze, and it's prompting Mayor Adams to pull out all the stops. I'm talking about drastic actions, my friends like a director yelling cut in the middle of a chaotic movie scene. The mayor's got his work cut out for him, dealing with an influx that's turning city life into a high-stakes jigsaw puzzle. Imagine trying to find spots for everyone in a city that's already got more personalities than a Broadway cast.
So here's the lowdown. Adams is announcing cuts, and it's like he's playing budget Jenga, pulling out blocks left and right. The casualties? Well, get ready for it. The fire department, the police, schools, and even our beloved parks are getting a trim. Now you might be thinking, why in the world would you cut services that keep the city ticking? Excellent question. Mayor Adams claims it's because the city's strapped for cash, but here's where the plot thickens. Residents and critics are throwing their hands up saying, hold up, we didn't sign up for this. Legal challenges are sprouting like weeds in Times Square as folks express concerns. Public safety? Education? Community well-being? These are no small potatoes, and cutting funds here is like taking away the cheese from a New York-style pizza. It's just not right. We start tonight with New York City at a potential breaking point. We have been following the story, as you know, for months. 2022, when I took office, uh, we had the fourth lowest tourism. Now, Mayor Adams says that he has communicated with the White House about the urgency of the moment. Since arriving in the city, many asylum seekers are picking up various day jobs in order to make ends meet. These companies have violated state law by not paying the cost of caring for these migrants. Firefighters police officers, teachers, and the guardians of our green havens are feeling the heat. It's like taking away the superheroes and expecting the city to stay Gotham. The backlash is real, and it's not just grumbles over brunch, it's legal battles heating up like a summer sidewalk. Adams might be wielding the budget axe, but the people are saying, not on our watch. It's a showdown between the mayor and those who call this concrete jungle home. Can you imagine New York without the wail of sirens? the presence of our men and women in blue, the laughter of school children, and the rustle of leaves in our parks? It's a tough pill to swallow, and the city's pushing back, telling Adams, we need these services, they're the heartbeat of our home. The drama continues, and it's a tale of controversy, cuts, and a city fighting to keep its soul intact. NYC's unique right to shelter. All right, New Yorkers, gather round, because Mayor Adams is playing the 911 we need backup card the city's in a bit of a pickle and the mayor is calling for federal assistance like a superhero calling the justice league so what's the issue the city is running on fumes resources are as scarce as a cab in the rain and adams is waving the distress flag but here's the catch the city's got this unique rule book from the 1980s called the right to shelter rules it's like a new york city exclusive and not everyone's a fan these rules basically say, if you need a place to crash, we've got you covered, no questions asked. Sounds noble, right? But here's where the plot twist comes in. Adams is shouting from the rooftops, Hey, federal government, we're drowning here, and these unique rules of ours are making it hard for you to toss us a lifeline. It's like the city's asking for a hand, but the very rules meant to help are tying things up in a bureaucratic knot. Mayor Eric Adams today announcing a lawsuit against 17 bus and transportation companies. Dude, I'm very public. Everybody knows who I am. You guys know where I'm at. I am all the time. Over 60 million people visited, and every time I went to Times Square, walked the streets, you see a different energy out there. I think it was more like 4,000 people that we got last week, which is kind of insane when you think about what these numbers are. Because they were protesting a new migrant shelter at a former senior living facility. Imagine this. NYC is unique, with its own set of rules, and the feds are scratching their heads going, how do we help a city that marches to its own beat? It's not that they don't want to lend a hand, it's just that these special NYC rules are throwing a curveball into the game. So while Adams is on the phone with the feds, the rest of us are wondering if this call for help will break through the bureaucratic red tape. Will the city get the federal lifeline it needs, or will those unique shelter rules keep NYC in a league of its own? budgetary challenges. Hold on to your wallets, New Yorkers, because Mayor Adams is flipping through the city's budget like it's his personal piggy bank. The story? Financial constraints. The plot twist? Unpaid bills and violations are piling up faster than pizza delivery in a movie marathon. So here's the scoop. Mayor Adams is waving the red flag shouting, we're broke, as a reason for slashing budgets left and right. It's like watching someone tighten their belt so much, it starts squeezing the life out of their wardrobe. But hold on! The audience isn't buying it entirely. Picture this. 
The city has a laundry list of uncollected fees and violations, and we're not talking pocket change. We're talking a jaw-dropping $2.1 billion. That's enough to make Wall Street do a double take. Critics are raising an eyebrow, going, hey, if you've got $2.1 billion in the couch cushions, maybe we shouldn't be tightening belts. We should be paying some bills. It's like Adams is saying, sorry, folks, we're on a budget. While the city has a stash that could make Scrooge McDuck jealous. Mayor Eric Adams announcing today a new executive order restricting the arrival of buses. Adams predicts the migrant crisis will cost the city $12 billion by July of 2025. Is it perfect? No. But is a system that prevented children and families from. Power, or if there's some financial wizardry at play. Here's the kicker. People are questioning the accuracy of these financial constraints. Is the city really counting every penny, or are there some hidden treasures waiting to be discovered? It's a mystery wrapped in a budgetary enigma. The city's facing a dilemma, cutting essential services or digging into the sofa cushions for that $2.1 billion. It's like trying to decide between paying rent or splurging on a fancy dinner. The critics are saying, hey, let's pay the bills and keep the lights on, while Adams is arguing, we've got to tighten the purse strings. Will the city find a middle ground? Will those uncollected fees finally find their way into the city's coffers? Stay tuned to find out.